Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for rising up this morning. We thank you for your letting us see the dawn of a brand new day. God, you didn't have to do it. We could have found ourselves in any circumstance this morning, but you saw fit to put breath in our bodies, to give our limbs some mobility. Lord, we give you praise this morning. For no matter what we find ourselves going through, your presence in our lives is greater than any struggle. Your being with us is greater than any trial. Your promises to us are greater than any obstacle. So right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you. Oh, we could we could begin to give the laundry list of things we're concerned about. We can uh, come to you and start asking you for a whole lot of stuff, God. And I know that we want to, but right now, God, we just want to say thank you. Now, God, as we worship you, we hope our worship to be real. We will not just go through the motions because we know what we're supposed to do. But that we will truly worship you as you deserve to be worshipped. God, we know there are sick among us. We know that there are those who are bereaved. We know that there are those who are struggling, God. And we, we know that we don't have to ask you to be dispatched because you're already right there. We ask that you help them to feel your presence and to know that there's nothing too hard for you. Now, God, as we continue to worship you in this moment, in this time, in this, this, this hour of praise and worship and, and word, we ask that you would touch, that your Holy Spirit would rule and reign, and that when we have finished with this moment, of giving you what you deserve, that we will not be the same, but that we will be changed, that we will strive to be better because you've given us one more chance. We thank and give you praise right now for it. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. being here on this morning, uh, being with us, whether you are here live with us this morning or whether you will uh, hear this later on this afternoon or tomorrow or the next day, whatever time that you are joining us in worship, we're grateful for your presence. Uh, we want to uh, acknowledge that on last week we were uh, we were in pink because we were uh, commemorating and celebrating with the survivors of breast cancer. And today we are in purple as we share and, and pray with and, and think of those who are the victims of or those who have been the survivors of domestic violence of any kind. For domestic violence is not just physical, but emotional, mental, and anything that keeps us from being free in our life and living, controlled environments are abuse. And so we ask God to bless right now. There may be someone listening right now who's going through. We ask that you would pray first and then ask God to show you places, people, resources you can turn to so that you no longer have to live in fear. So we are praying with and for you today as we commemorate and as we recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the month of October. May God bless and keep you. Now, we come each week and we uh, ask that you would continue Miles Chapel to be generous with your giving. 
We know that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his or her giving. And so uh, we are coming again this morning to appeal to you to be a generous giver, to be one who knows that God has given us uh, resources, and even though for some of us it's less than it's been, God has still blessed. And so we're asking that you would share what God has given to you. If you are not a part of the Miles Chapel family, but you've been a part of our virtual family, we invite you to partner with us as you are, as you can give on uh, on Cash App at, at Dollar Sign Miles Chapel. Uh, 4315, and on our web page, milescapelcme.org, if you'll click on online giving, you'll be able to give there. So you may have a device in your hand, or you may be a member who has your envelope in your hand that you're going to send in this week. We want you to get it in your hand. And repeat with me. I'm going to ask those who are in the building to repeat as well. Uh, and our, our, our mantra, our words to God, our our wanting God to bless us is, is in the affirmation that we speak now. And we say, God is my source and provider. God is my source and provider. And as God has provided, as God has provided I, now I now share. All things come from thee. All things come from thee. So I give cheerfully. So I give cheerfully. And trust that every need is met. Abundantly. Abundantly. We thank you for saying that with us. And that is our prayer, the prayer of our heart, that God will bless abundantly. And we thank you for your generosity. Amen. Amen. Finally, as we before we hear from our virtual praisers again, and we thank God for them and for Brother Kemp and for our media ministry. We want you to know that there are people in the uh, on the Facebook uh, live right now who are willing to pray with you, pray for you, to intercede on your behalf. Our prayer warriors are there. So if you would just put your name or the name of a loved one or the name of a family or someone you know that is going through, if you'll just write their name in the chat or put the prayer sign uh, in the chat and we'll know it's you. Uh, that, that, that emoticon, just put it there, that, that prayer. And we'll know that you are in need of prayer because we don't want you to think for one moment that you are alone in this season. There, We are here ready to pray with you, to share with you, to let you know that you are not alone. And that the, the prayers of the righteous still avail much and that prayer does change things. So if you are in need of prayer, or if you would like to intercede on someone's behalf, please put your name, their name, the prayer sign, in the comment section, and we will be sure to have our prayer warriors to pray with and to pray over whatever it is you stand in need of. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for our message for the day. We're going to ask that our virtual praises would come back and we would uh, sing together for you uh, that no matter what our circumstances are, praise is always in order. Amen? Amen. 
that we remember it wrong. And when we're not fully connected to the master, we find ourselves being faulty kingdom citizens, even as we're striving to be right. We get the, the stuff, but we get it in the wrong order. We cannot let these times we live in shake us from our assignment. Jesus has commissioned us. That's why we call it the Great Commission. We are commissioned, and a commissioned soldiers don't lose focus when the terrain gets murky. They, they, no matter how the circumstances of their, uh, 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 where they find themselves in, 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 in combat, they remember the fight plan. They remember the blueprint. They, they remember the strategy. And they never forget the instructions of the commanding officer. Jesus is reminding us, even in this season, I've given you some instructions. And I know it's a mess out here, but because I've given you some instructions, I'm going to need you to follow the plan. We've got to be uh, like good soldiers. One of my friends who was airborne and that's another little story about that earth and later. He said they were taught you shall follow every lawful command by your superior and do it quickly. So the word for us today is we've been given a commission. We've been given an assignment. We've been given some instructions and no, how, no matter how bad the circumstances are, we can't get so caught up in what we see in what we feel and what's going on that we fail to remember the instructions. Jesus is saying to us today, no matter what, remember what I told you. Yes, we call it the Great Commission. But, but if we're not careful, we begin to live like those children. We pass it on incorrectly or like that, we, we miss the point altogether. Uh, this, this, this text sits right at the end of Jesus' earthly, uh, uh, earthly uh, uh, being here, his, his earthly visit, his earthly time of teaching and, and sharing and, and, and becoming the Savior that they don't quite understand. But it comes at the end of his earthly mission. And it is the very last time that Jesus appears to them. Uh, and he's, you know, he's talked to him. He's uh, told Peter what Peter must do. They've gone fishing. They've been in the upper room. He told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait. But this is his trust to them. His trust to them and to us, whom he had chosen, he had cared for, and he had walked with for three full years. He tells them, here are your instructions, but the first thing I want you to know, and I don't want you to forget, I want you to remember, is that I have authority. Most of the time, we, we don't deal with Jesus' authority. We deal with what we want Jesus to do. We deal with how we can cry out to Jesus, but, but the thing that ought to keep us the most is that Jesus said, I The word authority is a strong word. It's filled with meaning. When we hear the word authority, there's a certain force about the word. Sometimes we're intimidated by the word. Those of us who are living in 2020, when we hear the word the authorities, we immediately go to those who have not always treated our community with respect. But when we hear the word authority as related to Jesus, we must remember that Jesus' authority surpasses all that which is in the earth. Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus said, all authority, not some of it, but all authority, which means all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Nothing gets missed. All authority is given unto me. And, and that's an amazing claim. That, that's not just privilege, but that's power. That's an amazing claim. 
claim to power, to permission, to do, to be the one who is in charge of it all. Jesus says, not only is authority granted, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus prefaced this lesson, this, this word to us with a word that is an absolute. He doesn't say some power. He doesn't say marginal power. He doesn't say most power. He says what? All power is given unto me. And we, 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 we sometimes skip that part. We go to what Jesus says do, but we, when we miss the thing that gives us the ability to do it. Yeah, well, yes, we're, we're to go do all the things that Jesus told us to do, but if we don't get the power of Christ ahead of it, it'll never get done. We try to educate the Great Commission on our own power. But Jesus declared that all power is his. He is not just powerful, he is the embodiment of power. What was given to him, he has given small portions of it to us. Jesus says, because I have power, you have been infused with authority to complete the task, the assignment, the commission that I have given you. But no matter what, you got to remember what I told you. So Jesus prefaces all of this. He lays the foundation with Jesus' authority. And then he said that because I have authority, I've given you this assignment, and therefore you must A friend of mine who was an airborne soldier said that they used to get preparatory commands when they got up in the plane. I, for me, this is just too much. I, I don't understand jumping out of planes. I, I don't get it. But soldiers do it all the time. But he said they got preparatory commands. And, and they would at one point, they would say three minutes before the jump, they would tell them to stand up. And they stand up, and then, then a minute later they would say, now hook up. Because they had to make sure they had their parachutes and everything that they would need. And then he would say there were two people who would go, who were assigned to go to the door, and he, they would say, stand in the door. Because those were going to be the last two to jump. And then one by one they would say, go, 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 until they all had jumped to go complete their assignment. What Jesus said to us, all action words here. Jesus says go, Jesus says make, Jesus says baptize, Jesus says teach. Jesus didn't say go have a meeting about what we need to do. He didn't say strategize and then decide how we're going to do what he said. Sometimes, church, we spend so much time in the preliminaries that we don't get much done. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't plan. I'm not saying we shouldn't have a method by which we do things. But, but sometimes we get caught up in the fellowship so much yeah. that we miss the fellowship. We come and we hear inspiration and we listen and we hear the word and some of us even preach the word. But what is it compelling us? Does it compel any activity? Or do we just say, well, we sure had good church? Is our faith walk an action verb or just a passive suggestion? Dr. J. B. Gambrell tells an amusing story about General Stonewall Jackson's famous valley campaign. The uh, army found itself on one side of the river when it needed to be on the other side. And after telling his engineers to plan to build a bridge so the army could cross, he called his wagon master in to tell them that it was urgent that the wagon cross the river as soon as possible. The wagon master started gathering all the logs, the rocks, the fence, the rails he could find to build a bridge. He didn't care about the engineers. Long before the light of day, General Jackson was told by his wagon master that all the wagons and artillery had crossed the river. General Jackson asked, where are the engineers and what are they doing? The wagon master shook his head and replied, they're in the tent drawing up some plans. 
Sometimes we find ourselves there, church. When it's time to move, when it's time to act, when it's time to, to help someone, when it's time to reach out and, and be who Jesus has told us to be, we find ourselves uh, planning, sitting in the tent, planning for the bridge. We are missing our assignment when we fail to act. Yes, we are going through it. Yes, these are difficult times. But Jesus didn't say act only if conditions were favorable. He didn't say teach only if it was in a manner that we're used to. He didn't say make disciples if you can see them face to face. Yes, we are virtual. No, we can't gather. So we can't do it like we, we'd like to. We don't get a pass till it's better, church. We got to remember what he told us to do. And then we got to get up and do it. And we got to do it whether it's on the phone, on a Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, in a text, in a drive through Whatever it takes, go, make, baptize, teach. Jesus said, remember what I told you. in God's 
word and recognize that we do it with the authority of he who has all power. Because if we don't, we will fail to act. Because we will falter in our ability and in our awareness. But church, I, I'm not a big proponent of declaring and decreeing, but when the word of God is right and we can call that into existence and we can stand on it, we must declare and decree that nothing will get in the way yeah. of our learning and our leaning. Some of us have spent this last eight months waiting on it to end, and that has been a, a moment in God's word. We must proclaim like the hymnist that I need to know more about Jesus. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my keeper be. Showing the things of Christ to me. Jesus wants us to increase our acumen, our knowledge of him. And he says, remember what I told you. And finally, he says, you remember what I told you, you know you can abide. You can be right in my presence because I have promised to abide with you. Again, the King James Bible says, Lo, I am with you always. Jesus came, Emmanuel, God with us, and he said, and he says to the disciples, though I'm leaving you in, a, in the flesh, I'm still with you. I'm still with you because I will send the Holy Spirit to be comfort and God. Jesus wants us to remember that what Jesus wants us to remember is that because he has all authority, there is no action we cannot do in him. Because he has all power, there is no ability, no awareness, no aptitude that we cannot learn.
was precisely what the child needed to finish her race. Church, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that because Jesus came and died for our sins and rose on the third day, I'm glad that while we run in this race, that sometimes makes us cry and sometimes makes us think we can't make it. Oh, You 
Lord, I know I need you. I may have been trying to do all of this by myself, but Lord, I'm standing on the track with tears in my eyes, and I, I need some help. Lord, I know that you died on the cross for my sins, and, and I confess that already. And I, I, I know that I just got to believe that God raised you from the dead. And, and, and then I'll, I'll be saved. I'll begin the process of new life in you. And I, I really need that right now, God, because I, I've been trying to do this thing on my own and I can't do it. But I know in you there's nothing impossible. So I give you my life. I give you my heart. And I thank you for promising that you'll never, ever leave me. I receive you right now to walk with me and talk with me and to be Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, Salvation has come to your house today. Rededication has come to your house today. Walk in it. Trust God in all things and remember that he promised never to leave you. As we prepare to get ready to close this worship experience. I just want to leave this hymn with you to remind you. Keep, keep humming and keep it in your heart. No matter what you go through, remember what Jesus told you. Mm -hmm. I've seen the divine
Somebody tonight. 